I fully understand that my opinions of popular media are mine and they are not shared by everyone, nor do I feel like they need to be, and I will also be the first to admit my tastes are not always mm, aligned with the masses, uh, as my top picks for movies growing up were all, um, <clears throat> Uh, should I say, uh, critical failures according to the box office, but uh, I'm in a camp where I don't always like a movie because it's good. I mean, I like, there are movies that I like that are good, that I like, but there are movies that I like just because they're entertaining. And uh, it has put me in a few situations, my dudes. Some people get their high from the struggle of trying to debate hot topics with someone on the complete opposite side of the political spectrum. I get my high from trying to convince someone that a movie like Velocipaster is worth the 70 minutes of your life that it will take away from you. <laughs> with that, we start a series I like to call Movies That Deserve To Be Watched. Uh, working title. I think deserve to be watched is uh, going to be the short, but uh, specifically today we're talking about a movie, so uh, just roll with me here. Essentially, uh, instead of just bashing on TV and movies that offend me, uh, I will be defending movies that are nearly universally agreed to be bad, <laughs> because uh, for some reason, this is the hill I choose to die on. Uh, don't worry, I will still get upset by dumb stuff that also doesn't matter, and future redesign and rants are planned, my dudes, but I just want to balance out between attack and defense in order to round out my team. I mean channel. The movie I'll be talking about today is Chaos Walking, the movie that tried to start the next big dystopian YA novel adaptation franchise, and suffered from a production nightmare beyond just trying to release in the year of our lord 2020, which as we all know to be famously the literal worst time to have anything to do with the movie industry. That's it. That's the biggest thing that happened in 2020. Yeah, full stop. <laughs> Chaos Walking is about a future where humanity has fled the earth and started expeditions to other planets, and one such settlement has been left to their own devices on a harsh forest planet that is some sort of anomaly causing all of the thoughts of men to be viewed outside of their brains. Accurately called the noise, because damn is it noisy. I should clarify, it only affects cisgendered men, as far as I can tell. Who's to say about trans people or intersex individual? I don't know. If it's like a chemical balance of testosterone that's interacting with like neurons or whatever the anomaly chemical in the air is, the, like, I mean, if you take the steps to increase or decrease your testosterone levels, will you gain or lose the ability? I don't know, but, like, the, the noise isn't a long exposure thing. It's, it's an instantaneous upon entering the atmosphere of the planet. Uh, you don't even have to directly be interacting with the atmosphere. You just have to be near it. And then, like, but then maybe it, it's specifically something with, like, a white chromosome present in your DNA. Or, like, it's one of those things, it's one of those world-building rules where it's like, I, don't think about it too hard. This is the rule of our universe. <laughs> Just live with that and move on. We can't sit here all day, we're an action movie, damn it. <laughs> the book this movie is based on probably explains it, and uh, I haven't read the book or the books, there are three, but you know, before watching this movie or even before recording this video. So uh, this is coming from the perspective of someone who knows that the book is probably better and has always been told to read the books first, of course, but uh, has watched the movies anyways, <laughs> going in blind. Because uh, I grew up in a time where Harry Potter movies and books were actively coming out during my childhood. And looking between a three inch thick novel versus a two hour movie, I picked movie every time. I was not a strong reader and I wasn't about to miss out on the hubbub, so. <laughs> Uh, I know I'm gonna get flack for not respecting the original novel by not reading it. Uh, I'm sure it's great. I'm sure it's great. But I know I'm not the only person who's been advised to read the book first and didn't and made it out on the other side alive. Uh, so this movie recommendation is for book cowards. Book cowards exclusively. We're not perfect, but we're getting by. <laughs> So yeah, living in a world where there are no ladies and society has been structured with the idea that private thoughts are long gone. Uh, this is our setting. Uh -huh. The story follows the trials and tribulations of Todd Hewitt as played by the freaking gorgeous 
Tom Holland, which I tried my goddamnedest to do justice here in the picture that I'm drawing. I I don't think I did justice. I am so sorry, hun. Ugh, I've loved you ever since you swung into my heart as Spidey and you have done nothing but be sweet and handsome and hilarious since. Todd's Hewitt's life is turned upside down by the crash landing of Viola, played by the phenomenal Daisy Ridley, who could murder me with that smile. Oh my god, she's just, she's just so cute. Besitos para la mujer linda. Ah. So Viola is a member of the second wave of humans coming to settle on this wild planet, and she's the first lady in town. Both of those aspects shake things up a little too much, and Todd and Viola have to go on a adventure to contact Viola's mothership and get her away from a town of sexists. <laughs> so, time to defend this movie. Uh, first and foremost, you gotta feel, you gotta feel for the the production. A lot of things went wrong, uh, and it was really nobody's fault. So Lionsgate got the rights to the movie in about 2011. The script was written and rewritten by everybody and their brother, including Patrick Ness, the original writer of the novel. Uh, which you know, spending a lot of time on like the script and refining is is not unheard of. They finally get started filming sometime between 2016 and 2017. And they're thinking, okay, cool, we'll be ready to release in 2019. So they fin finish filming, they do test screenings, realize, oh shoot, we gotta do some reshoots because the test screenings are not going good. So they called for the reshoots, but uh, they couldn't do them because that was the exact moment that both of their leads' careers were flung into outer space. <laughs> uh, they were both hitting like the biggest moment both of them starting up on like huge franchises with Disney and so they had to wait until Disney was finished filming with them before handing them back to Lionsgate for the reshoots so they're doing the reshoots the movie's looking good they're thinking of maybe a spring 2020 release maybe and then a crack -a -pow! the Ides of March step forth and piss on their dreams and then it's delay after delay and delay, they give up, and they release it to theaters and Amazon Prime in January 2021. To abysmal reception. Once again, taking a long time to get a movie out is not the wildest thing, but it had some unique curveballs thrown in for sure. <laughs> you gotta feel for these guys. Now, uh, on top of not envying the position production was put in, the movie, I think, was not marketed as I think maybe it should have, uh, or at least the advertising I saw didn't give the impression that I ended up getting after watching the movie itself. Going in, although I'm usually pretty open-minded, going into the movie I was nervous. I thought it was going to be darker and grittier, but like in that uncomfortable way, like when you're watching something that's like got that fiction fantasy and you're trying to you you're, you're trying to like disassociate and like leave the world, but then they hit you with something that's like, "Oh, it's too real. Oh, I am uncomfy. Oh no." But fortunately, my want and need to be settled between a Tom Holland Daisy Ridley pretty person sandwich overpowered by worry and I watched it, and it was actually a really good balance between, like, the serious tension and the lighthearted moments. I experienced both the stress and the giggles. It was, uh, it was really entertaining, and I would like to watch it again. But really the number one thing that I noticed that was absolutely not made clear in the marketing, but immediately sold me on the movie when I watched it, was that Todd Hewitt is a complete moron. <laughs> So, like, he displays good survival skills. He's very physically capable of keeping himself alive out in the wilderness. He's technically capable. But, like, every other moment, he is just a complete idiot. Uh, he is constantly just in his head. He's, like, really emotional. But, like, he's always trying to be, like, a big, tough, manly man. Ooh, which he's not. So there's, like, that conflict there. And we, we get to see all of this happen in live with his noise going off at all times and he has like no filter for his dumb brain and is constantly saying stupid shit with his thoughts uh, <laughs> and then on top of that he has like 
no education. It is made very clear that this village of men is kept dumb on purpose. Illiteracy is on the rise. They made sure that the kids know nothing of the outside uh, of the outside world, plus a whole stack of lies to keep everybody quiet and complacent and huddled into this little town. It is not healthy and it is full of spoilers, but but yeah. Todd Hewitt is an idiot and I love him for it. This all leads to some like lightly funny, socially awkward moments between him and Viola on their journey, which lightens up things in an otherwise stressful environment. Uh, and it's just great because it's it's just, it's just really human. It's it's all humanizing, and it's a whole lot of Todd's brain says something dumb with his thoughts. He profusely apologizes because at the end of the day, he's a sweetheart, and Viola's just standing there like. I have traveled across the vastest of space in the search of mankind's salvation, and I landed onto a planet of dumb boys. This is truly humanity's darkest moment. <laughs> so yeah, Todd is raised in a backward sort of town, but he's a sweet himbo trying to come to terms with everything he's uncovering about the world he thought he knew. And then Viola is just trying her best to survive and is strongly debating returning to space and just staying there. <laughs> and I will admit, th this review is more of a goofy interpretation of what it is. I, I will admit that. But there are serious moments, and yes, this movie takes itself seriously, as it should. That's fine. But once again... If you're going in without reading the book and you're a himbo fanatic, moral sexual, however you call it, or you just like dumb boys being dumb and sweet with a side of side fi action, this is it. <laughs> Chaos Walking is on my list of deserves to be watched because Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley work great together as an awkward young duo. This movie got pushed off a lot of people's radars because of everything that happened in production and marketing and 2020. And I understand the hesitation to watch, but in my opinion, I think Chaos Walking deserves to at least be watched. Specifically by people who haven't read the book and know that they won't anytime soon. If you read the book or uh, would prefer to read the book before watching the movie, uh, I apologize for this entire review. This was not for you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But for my book cowards out there, uh, even if you watch it and don't see the charm that I did, that's fine. I just think it deserves the shot because a lot of people overlooked this film. And I just need enough people to see it so that there's more than like seven one shots on AO3. I am severely lacking in the fan content for this. I know it's my own fault for always getting into ships that no one cares about, but it's not the point. See the charm or don't, please give Chaos Walking a chance. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> Uh, I, I hope you enjoy the art. I wanted to do a sort of sketch page, kind of like I, I've done in the past for Sam Guthrie with the New Mutants movie, which I also loved and also got terrible reviews. So I will also do a video on. I also feel like I was not able to capture Tom Holland's features once again, and definitely not his performance as Todd, but um, but I do think I, I, I nailed down Daisy Ridley as Viola. So. I also am really proud of how I got like the sort of dreamy effects of the noise here, um, which I will formally apologize. I don't have that footage. Uh, so here's the final product. I'm sorry, you don't get to see how I did that. <sighs> it's like the most impressive part of the painting and I missed it. <laughs> if you like what you see, check out my Twitter and Instagram for the full images and more art like it. Uh, my commissions are open, so check out my Twitter for the prices and this week's Redbubble shop highlight is Chillin' in Orange from the beautiful people collection on my shop. Uh, get yourself a pretty lady, just vibe it on your notebook, or on your t-shirt, or whatever else, maybe a coffee mug. There's a bunch of different options. Ah, okay, thanks for watching. End of video. Bye!